What does filmed for IMAX mean? It isn't just a movie that'll look great on IMAX's screens. It means that hiding from a sandstorm feels like fear in every flicker. And every triumph is felt in every sound wave. And the things we've only imagined, you can truly experience those too. That's what filmed for IMAX means. Get tickets to experience Dune Part 2 now and IMAX's exclusive expanded aspect ratio. Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me, as always, is... Sesame, um, Sesame, I didn't know that Netflix took away the Shannara Chronicles, and then I spent all of Saturday night on April, February uh, 17th trying to find a streaming platform that aired it and the only thing i could find was to be but then it was only season two and it was in spanish in carta that is quite possibly the longest name you have <laughs> came up with in yeah. the history of this podcast yeah yeah i think so um so i had a netflix issue too i'm 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 mad because you know they're cracking down they, they cracked down on the on the uh, password sharing thing. And I was uh, yeah, yeah. kind of using my nieces for a uh, couple months here. And all of a sudden it's just won't let me do it anymore. So I'm kind of upset because I was watching some good stuff on Netflix and now I can't anymore. And with that on, with that in mind, um, I guess in the next couple of months or sometime in the near future, uh, Hulu and Disney plus are supposed to be doing that as well. So we may be uh, seeing the end of being able to see, share uh, share streamers with your friends and family anymore. So it's just so stupid. I mean, I understand and from the business perspective, but it's just so the the problem the problem I have with it is is that they all started out with being um, like f- you know free of ads, and you're paying a monthly yeah. fee, and it was an affordable monthly fee. Then they raised the fee and made it a little bit more expensive, which I kind of understand. You know, you get more content, more things like that. And then they started adding ads to a lot of these platforms and still Mm -hmm. charging you on top of it. And Mm -hmm. now they're charging you even more plus the ads. It's just it's ridiculous. I mean, pretty pretty soon it's just going to be like, you know, you somehow have to pay them for the ads. Yeah, you got up. It's like an upcharge. I mean, yeah. Hulu is a great example of this. And I, I was saying this, <clears throat> excuse me, from the very beginning when I when it was like, oh, it's free. I'm like, yeah, it's free for now. They want to get you to watch oh, yeah. Hulu. It's going to be a paid thing. Which, of course, that's what it was. I'm like, okay. And then it was like, all right, well, now we're going to add ads, so you have to pay the extra thing to not to watch it without ads. Mm-hmm. And then they're probably going to upcharge that. Then they're going to have something like with Netflix. I've heard that they're going to start showing ads for like some, like the cheaper version or whatever. Oh, the the cheaper tier. I think they've already done that. And so, but the way that the guy framed it, I don't know if he was like the CEO or someone in charge of their propaganda or whatever. Um, He's like, this is um, to like give the viewers like a unique experience. Like, so they get to see ads, like, like trying to frame it as though this is what the audience wants. Like, yeah, I totally want to see commercials in between my shows like yeah. what? well, well <laughs> you know? Amazon Prime just added ads. I uh I up- yeah. I upgraded to get rid of them, but just because I watch a lot of stuff on there. But friend of my a friend of mine said that the way that the uh the ads are, it's like horrible to the point where they uh they really um like interrupt things in the we- in the weirdest times. It's like, you know, television shows that were on TV were originally made to be broken up into ads. Yeah. And I understood like when they would show a movie from, you know, a, a cinema movie on TV and they'd have to 
kind of place ads in there too. But I guess the way they're doing it now is probably done by AI or automation. And you'll you'll be like in the middle of a scene, he said, in a movie, and all of a sudden an ad will come on. Yeah, like if if, no, if if you put it in a natural break or like a or a, or somewhere that makes sense, like in between scenes in a movie, I understand the ad. But if you're like in the middle of an action scene and then all of a sudden there's an ad, it would be like, what the hell? Not acting very weirdly and not a good model of behavior, which then brings us to our episode today. Today we are having an all to interview with a uh, local actress and model, Sadie Quinn. It was a great interview that I had the other day with her. She wanted to emphasize like this uh, newer business that her and her husband started called Toledo Talent. You can go to toltalent.com to get more info about that, but it's a place where um, they're uh, bringing together creative people of all types in a collaborative environment and also a place where you can find talent through them. It's kind of like a, uh, they have, they have classes and for like all aspects of acting and modeling. Also they, it's kind of like a, uh, I don't know, like a, she kind of like represents models and actors too, as well on there, like starting out to do that, like in a more like localized way than having to, you know, pay a lot of money to somebody that's going to screw you over or something, you know, but, um, not that all, not that all, uh, you know, agents and managers are like that, but you know, some are just in it for the money, but you know, this was a good interview and, um, hope you enjoy it. And here's the interview. Just wanted to welcome Sadie to the podcast here. And, uh, first just, uh, wanted to ask you to tell us just a little bit about yourself and your background. Um, so for me, I stopped kind of like working a normal job. Mm, I want to say four years ago. Uh, and I started working from home, various hobbies. Uh, I do leather working. I started doing modeling, that kind of stuff. Um, and then just all of that kind of led me into opening up kind of my own business, uh, helping other people learn how to model and act and getting into the industry, being able to work for themselves and make money off of hobbies that they like doing. That's really cool. Yeah, I uh, understand that. I mean, I've been trying to strive towards that to be able to make a living doing what I care about as opposed to, uh, you know, work working a nine to five or whatever. What in your life initially like sparked your interest into acting and film and the arts in general? Um, so when I was younger, I was always, you know, wanting to be in the school plays and I was always trying to be, you know, different main characters, that kind of thing. Um, and then I did choir and I did band for a while and I ended up kind of shifting more to choir. Um, and I went to a fine arts camp in Michigan that, cause I'm originally from Michigan. I went to a fine arts camp in Michigan that's called Blue Lake and I got to major in choir. I got to major in band, musical theater, that kind of thing. So it's always kind of been like part of my life going throughout school and, and growing up. Uh, I didn't really have much family connections to the arts. My family wasn't really that. I mean, I had two older brothers. They both did sports. Uh, <laughs> so I was kind of the first one to really get into the arts. But I had a lot of support there. So I was always wanting to do it bigger. And my mom always wanted me to get into something that was bigger, you know, find an agency, do commercials, that kind of thing, model. And being from a small town, it wasn't really realistic. There's a lot of scam agencies out there that want yeah. to pay a bunch of money without giving you anything to show uh -huh. for it. So I just never really got into actually doing it professionally until I moved to Toledo. Ohio, where it's kind of like a big city for me. People who live in Toledo are always <laughs> like, oh, Toledo, oh, it's nothing. But coming from a really small town in Michigan, it's actually a big city. Michigan's bigger cities aren't, you know, as big as Toledo, even though it's one of the smaller ones in Ohio, the smaller big cities. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I lived in Toledo most of my life. Uh, a couple years ago, I moved to Finley just because of family reasons. But, you know, I can tell the difference. Like down here, it's so much more mellow and it just doesn't seem like a city at all. So... <laughs> But yeah, I kind of <laughs> kind of miss Toledo for that. But sometimes I like the slower pace of things there. So was there anything in your life, like any uh, film or or person or anybody that kind of like inspired you the most, like to get involved? So the actually, my my husband was the one who really got me to uh -huh. like 
push towards that. Um, I had been working from home, you know, just doing the leather working. I was a live streaming on Twitch, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then I saw a sign for a um, for classes, for acting classes. And I was like, you know what? That sounds really fun. And he told me, you know, why don't you go try it out? We'll see what, what happens. Um, and I started doing that. And I started really like taking the initiative to find different jobs and things I could do in the area that pertain to acting and modeling. And I was able to, I know you uh, had a podcast with Anthony Wright. I yeah. was in The Ride to Nowhere. Uh, yeah. That was my first actual like film that I had been cast in. Oh, nice. I do a little bit more modeling just because there's more jobs yeah. around here for that. But I try my best to like push into acting as much as possible. And he really like kind of pushed me towards that. Uh, and then he supported me even more by he took an interest in cinematography. And so we put together, you know, a web series and we currently film a web series with another group of actors that I met. And so he's really like right there with me as far as the career. And he's right there next to me supporting me and doing everything he can to kind of build both of us up and make it so that both of us can do this as a living. Yeah, that's good to have a good foundation and partnership there to yeah. get it going. Is there like anything and that you wish you knew before you got involved in modeling or acting or anything that, you know, would have helped to know ahead of time? I think one of the, yeah, I think one of the biggest things is you have to be very careful about, especially with modeling, who you're shooting with. There's a lot of people out there that we, you know, I, we call them creeps with a camera yeah. because they're not photographers. They're usually just wanting to take pictures of cute girls, you know, whatever. A lot of them, you know, boudoir and they want to do nudes and it's like, they're just kind of doing it crappy. Like, Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have anything against nude photography, but I always feel like it should be artsy. It's about yeah. the art. It's about the beauty of the body, you know, just like a, an old sculpture. So there's a lot of people that are like, hey, come out and take these new pictures. And they're, <laughs> you know, they're not actually wanting to do art. They're wanting to just take pictures of yeah. women. Yeah. Uh, so that's a big thing to watch out for is no matter, you know, if, even if it's someone's offering you good money, you want to make sure you're really looking into the photographers or even the, the some people do it in film too. Yeah. Make sure you're looking into anyone you're going to be going somewhere and shooting with and always bring an escort. Thankfully, I didn't have to learn the hard way with the escort, but I, you know, had some weird situations with different photographers where you get out there and they'd want more and it, it just gets weird. You just got to mm -hmm. make sure that you're really smart about what you're doing because there's a lot of dangerous people out there. Yeah, I know a, a friend of mine up in uh, Detroit, um, she said when she was first starting out, there was like an ad on Craigslist for a, for an acting job to meet at this storage unit. And it seemed really <laughs> oh, creepy man. to her, but then she found out she didn't go for it, but she saw it on there. And then a couple days later... She found out she made the right choice because somebody was murdered in that in that storage wow. unit. Wow! Yeah, and that's exactly. Yeah. I mean, we've seen Dahmer made you know yeah. news for a while there when Dahmer came out, and it's the same thing. You know, you meet someone at the club and they go, uh -huh. "You want to come back take pictures at my house for fifty bucks? Don't ever, yeah. don't ever do that." And no. a real professional photographer is not going to ask you to come back to their house and take photos for fifty bucks. <laughs> and I, I think the best bet is to you know always have a partner with you to protect you, somebody you know, especially yeah. Like yeah, you know, somebody that can protect you too. I mean, too, to make sure that right. things don't go south. Because I've I've encountered people that are pretty creepy that in in my time in making films and stuff that I've uh, had to avoid and had to like fire from projects and things of that nature. So I know how it goes. Right. Yeah. And it's not just creepy too. It's um you know when you're trying to make something that's a good product, you have also have to look at some people's work because they may be more lax about their standards and things like that. And so sometimes when you're going to work with someone, you know, you're offering them something and it, it's it's a weird two thing with like sometimes you're paying the photographer, sometimes they're paying the model, sometimes they're just agreeing that they're both worth about the same amount of money and they're just trading. They call that like time for prints or same with, uh, you know, different like I shot with Anthony Wright. I would love to shoot with him for free because he just he does yeah. good work. You know, he's very respectful. He's fun to work with. And so you kind of have to look at all those factors when you decide to work with someone. Is their work worth it? Are they paying you? How are they as a person? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it, I mean, a lot of it comes down to the personality, I think, too. I mean, of course, the profession, yeah. professionalism, but there's somebody could be the greatest, you know, cinematographer or director or photographer in the world. But if you're working with them and they're a creep, it's horrible. You know, yeah, and it, <laughs> or they're just a asshole on set or something, then you're just not going to want to do it. 
Have you ever gotten any like great advice that since you've been doing this from anybody that's more experienced than you? Uh, man, I think one of the best pieces of advice for anyone is um, know your worth. If yeah. you know, like, like it goes back to with the with the professionalism and uh-huh. the, the person, know your worth. Don't just do things because you want to get them on your resume. Make sure that you're you know charging the appropriate amount. If you if you're doing this as a as a living, you know you make sure that you're. Get your gear hourly rate. You make sure you're paid for your drive, that kind of things. Know your worth and don't short yourself. And that's okay. the thing with any craft, I feel like, too. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, even with my leather working, it's, uh, I all, they were like, oh, it's so expensive, but it's expensive for a reason because it takes time and you're a skilled professional. Yeah. Cause I mean, I've, I know early on when I was doing things, people would say, oh, you can do this for exposure. And I always like to just respond, people die from exposure. <laughs> See, the th- funny thing, though, is in acting and modeling, sometimes exposure does weigh into price yeah. because um, it's like free advertising. Oh, yeah. If you're shooting with a model that has 100,000 followers and the photographer is just starting up an Instagram uh-huh. page, in a way, that's, you know, it is almost a weight in its own because you'd be paying yeah. to advertise to 100,000 people. I mean, if, if it's worth it, the exposure's right. But like if somebody's just use, exactly. using you for your uh, services or your product exactly. or whatever, it's not really worth it. And that's what I always say is like, know your worth. Like look at all of the different aspects of what they do and then decide whether or not you it's a fair trade. Yeah. I know you're involved, uh, you and your husband and other people are involved in uh, something called Toledo Talent. Can you tell me more about that a little bit? Yeah. So Toledo Talent is a company that we just started. We're still fairly new. And my goal with it is to help people who are trying to get into acting and modeling uh, take a reasonable approach. Okay. A lot of agencies in smaller areas like this tend to charge a ridiculous amount for you to take classes that generally don't give you that much yeah uh and then a lot of them push you to like go to uh, like a talent show where there's agents and you have to pay a lot a lot of money to go to these things and barely anyone gets actually booked and they're trying to push them to oh if you want to be an actor just move out to la or just move out to new york and that's not really realistic that's how a lot of people end up homeless in those places because it's expensive to live and if you have nothing on your resume and no training no one's gonna hire you and so i kind of want with what i'm doing with toledo talent is bring people in and give them classes that are actually gonna help them in the real professional acting and modeling world and kind of help them slowly build their portfolios up so that if they do want to move to LA as a future thing, they have something to show when they go there. They go, hey, I've been in these movies. I've done these modeling things. Uh, Here's my portfolio because it is a job. A lot of people think, oh, you know, actors and actresses, they just go out there and they just do it. Yeah. And they don't really think about how the fact that it is a profession, it is a job, yeah. you have to have a resume, um, you have to have training. And so that's, yeah. I want to take a more realistic approach to getting into the industry instead of just feeding off of people's dreams, which is what a lot of current agencies that are in smaller areas do. They're just kind yeah. of preying on people who have big dreams. And giving them unrealistic expectations. <laughs> I know. I know. Early on in my acting days, before I got into like behind the camera stuff, I I auditioned for one of these local uh, bigger talent agencies, if you want to call them that. And uh, that uh, my my buddy and I went to the thing to audition, right. and they were willing to take me for free as a client, but they wanted to charge him like hundreds of dollars to be their client and stuff. And I was just like, Yeah, I'm not going to do this. But then I found another no, ag- really. agency to represent me for voice work. But it was just totally yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Yeah, they want, you know, it's like there's one around here that wants $200 a month and they do these classes, but half of them are, you know, just improv student led stuff that you could just get a group of friends together and do at home. Yeah. So like I want like a comprehensive, you know, schedule for classes. This is we're going to today we're going to work on m- learning monologues. I want you to memorize these so that next week when we have classes, you can read them. Will record you doing them because that's a big thing. Seeing yourself uh-huh. on camera versus like just saying it to a group of people is completely different, yeah. and it's you know not as helpful to actually do. And so I want that on camera experience. I want to talk about the proper backdrop setups for auditioning for things that are because there's a lot of remote auditioning since COVID came around, and so being able to apply remote is a really big thing. And then you don't even have to move out to LA or New York; you can just 
yeah apply and then you fly out there and a lot of the times they'll pay for travel and they'll pay for hotel expenses or maybe your pay that they're offering does cover those you know and i mean you wouldn't have to you know and it's way expensive to move to new york or chicago or oh, los it's angeles so expensive. So, yeah, um even to toronto i mean but then you got to deal with international issues and stuff because i i i, w- I almost got a job as a as a as a cinematographer for a Canadian project and they found out I wasn't Canadian and then it was going to go all these hoops that they had to do and I couldn't do it because oh of that. yeah so because by law they have to have so many people that are Canadian on their set okay interesting yeah just just I mean I at least that's what it was about 10 years ago I don't know about now but yes right uh, yeah. I yeah. yeah do you have dreams that you want to achieve but are scared to do so due to self-doubt fear and other people's criticism, I have just what you need. You need a dose of the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, where I interview guests that will motivate and inspire you to stop at nothing to achieve your dreams. And always remember, if you believe, you can achieve. The Living the Dream with Curveball podcast is available on your favorite podcast app. Hey, everybody. Why don't you give the old Black Lincoln Collective podcast a listen? We're funny, we're fat, and we're here 24-7 at blcpodcast.com. Anytime you want to listen, anywhere, all your favorite podcast apps. Of course, we have a YouTube channel where you can stream live with the show. Check out our shorts. We're funnier the less you hear of us. That's been a Black Lincoln Collective podcast at blcpodcast.com. Do you have any like uh, upcoming projects or anything that you're working on? So we've been working on the web series I mentioned for a while. That actually started out with uh, I met a group of actors in these classes I was doing. And I was like, hey, you guys want to come over after and do some improv? Uh, And we just kind of did some goofy improv. We were going to make TikToks. And we went, why don't we make an actual show out of this? And so we have a show that we call Chasing Eden. uh, And currently we're doing like a cyberpunks-ish underground city thing. Like corporate-owned capitalistic city dystopia. And what we do is it's kind of like a LARP or like a D&D where... We have this world we built, but all of the actors make their own characters in this world. They talk about their goals, aspirations, things like that, kind of rough storyboarding. And then they improv as their characters, and then we write our scripts off of how they did the improv. So instead of just writing a script and handing it to some actors, they're involved in writing their own scripts, and it kind of feels more natural. That that's cool, yeah. Because then they they feel an ownership to the role, I think. Then too, so yeah. Yeah, they're and they're playing something that they want to play instead yeah. of you know usually you have a type that you get cast as or you might want to branch out. I want to try this kind of character archetype now, and so it enables them to be able to do what they want with their acting. That's cool. Uh, kind of related to that, I I was wondering like what do you hope happens like for like the Toledo area and Midwest in general, like when it comes to like the future of filmmaking and uh, modeling and acting and everything, like, are you hoping that something that changes or something gets better? Or- I really think that it will get better. I know like specifically Toledo, we have um, film Toledo, which is as of last year, the official film commission for the city. Yes. We had a man called Otto filmed here. Mm-hmm. They filmed at the train station, which was a really big deal. But that's kind of what made the city kind of realize that they needed someone to head that thing. Yeah. And I'm hoping with Film Toledo, they're going to be bringing more stuff in here. I mean, Cleveland's a pretty good hub, too. Being where we are in the Midwest is actually really nice because we have Detroit's not too far. It's about an hour. Cleveland's, you know, a couple hours. Actually, Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati all have decent art headers. And then you're not far from Indianapolis. Even Chicago and New York are an unrealistic drive. Atlanta, we're kind of in the middle of a lot of yeah. bigger hubs for film and modeling. So I'm hoping to see more kind of come down into the Toledo area now that we've got more infrastructure to support it. And with the building it ourselves, because I know there are places in Toledo that do film. Um, I've done quite a few things for Madhouse Creative and some of my people have, which they're a um, commercial. Yeah company and they've i mean they've been doing a lot so my hope is like with also being kind of an agency i'm training but then i'm also a pseudo agent yeah for these people i'm mass uh applying to like madhouse commercial things i get people that'll ask me to come out and do things anthony's had me bring some of my people out to do stuff just to get stuff on their resume and if it's paid it's a plus 
Yeah. And then when they get to a certain point, my hope is to kind of pass them to other Midwest agencies, which there's quite a few. Yeah. We've got, uh, you know, in Detroit, Columbus, everything like that. There's agencies all around. And so there is infrastructure here. We just haven't seen much. And I think COVID kind of like halted progress and kind of yeah. reversed progress on a lot of that stuff. But now that we're out of that and we're starting to kind of get back to society, people are more excited than ever. And so we're going to see more build because people just want to get out and they want to do these things now that they can. Yeah, I, I think it's a good thing that we have like film Toledo. Um, I'm hoping that's that- Hoping that'll help, you know, with everybody. I'm trying to get back into it myself, so I'm hoping that I can uh, get some projects done through that. I've been talking to uh, people involved with Film Toledo, and my my best friend is Lindsay LaForest, and her husband's on the board there. Okay. So yeah, so yeah, I know. so the uh, now I've got some like fun questions to ask. What is something that you have done that you're pretty sure that no one else listening has done? I guess I could say, oh man, I've done a lot of things, but is that no one else has done. Or, or very few people. Uh, the only thing I can really, really think of is I did something when I was in my senior year of high school called FCCLA, Future Career Community Leaders of America. And we won for a project, me and my partner won state gold, and we got an all expenses paid trip from our tech school to go to Nashville, Tennessee and compete at the national level. Uh, and we won gold at national. It wasn't top gold, but we did one <laughs> gold at national uh, and got to just be in Nashville for like a week without having to pay anything. <laughs> that's awesome. When you were uh, growing up, who was your hero? Oh, that's also a really hard question. Um, I, when I was young, I lost my dad. Um, so uh-huh. I had a weird family dynamic there. I was about nine when he passed. Um, but I think really the person that like at the end of the day stepped up and just really made me feel comfortable was my grandmother. Yeah. Um, she lived just down the road from me. So I would walk there. I would spend the night, you know, and she was always, you know, she's in the old, in the grandma fashion. She's always a little judgy, but always supportive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it helped keep me grounded and she's always been just honestly one of the greatest people in my life that's cool i, I always like it when people are closer to grandparents my my hero is my grandpa <laughs> the logo that i don't know if you can see it behind me that's me and my grandpa. i love it that's me and my grandpa so when i was when i was like four so um it's a silhouette of it if you could play any fictional character, who would it be? Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> that was an easy one to answer. <laughs> yeah. There's probably no even explanation for it. It's just such a good ri- written role and created role. It would just be or, yeah. so so fun to do, honestly. Yeah. I love playing crazy characters. It's one of my favorite things to do. I, I'm definitely a character actor. I mean, honestly, if I could play like a female character, it would probably be Harley Quinn as well. So I mean, it's just <laughs> fun. Uh, what is your favorite song? Oh, that changes a lot. Yeah. Uh, gosh, currently, I would say my favorite song. It's a weird one. It's a it's the the artist is called Cosmo Sheldrake. Okay. And the song is The Moss. Um, it's very like alternative folk. If that makes sense. Yeah. I have a very unique music taste, so it tends to like fluctuate. Um, <laughs> but I would say that one's my current favorite song. I'll have to look that up. Yeah, it sounds like something I might like to. <laughs> and the final fun question here is, what is a guilty pleasure movie or TV show that you love? Guilty pleasure movie or TV show? Okay, I really like anime, so that's just an encompassing okay. thing. I wouldn't say it's necessarily yeah. a guilty pleasure, though, because it's when I was younger, it was like yeah. you got bullied for anime, but now it's cool. So, yeah. But I would say Sucker Punch. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a guilty pleasure movie for me for sure because it's very cheesy and you know odd but I just love the like I don't know I love the actors and the, like it's kind of girl power yeah and it's got a lot of interesting deeper elements that go on if you're paying enough attention is there anything else you would like to say before we wrap things up oh uh I don't think there's too much else I need to say. I uh, I just really hope that, you know, we see the film community grow out here in the Midwest and it continues to go well. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to help people get into the industry and be able to continue doing what I'm doing and 
making it reasonable for people to be able to enter the industry. And then the final question I ask everybody is, where would you like to be found online? Uh, if you would look up, you can look up Toledo Talent is probably the best yeah. one uh, for Instagram and for Facebook. But I think we're Toledo.Talent. Let me make sure. Because you know how that is. Yeah. Yeah, we're Toledo.Talent on Instagram and Facebook. That's the easiest place to find us. And from there, you can usually find my personal pages, our Chase Eden pages, and all of our actors and things. And you can also go to toltalent.com to see like all of the actors and models we've got on our roster. And we've got some photographers and cinematographers and things like that on there too. Trying to make it like a centralized point where you can find what you need for acting and modeling. That's awesome. Yeah, and I'll uh, be sure to put links in the show notes for that so people can find it. Well, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you so much. I had a good time. Okay, that was my interview there with uh, Sadie Quinn from uh, Toledo Talent. Hope you enjoyed that um, and learned something about, you know, how to stay safe in the uh, uh, model and talent in- industry, How what you can do to learn more. If you're in the Northwest Ohio area, it's uh, Toledo Talent is a good place to uh, start. And there's a lot of things, a lot of good going on in Ohio as far as film goes, in my opinion. What do you say? I agree. That was deep. It, it was, yeah. Yes. I felt it right in my heart, in the in the cockles of my heart. Yep. In the sub cockles. I never heard that phrase before. <laughs> deep <laughs> down <laughs> inside. Deep down inside my heart, I felt it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So uh, a- a- any final thoughts here before we uh, end today? Just uh, enjoy yourselves. Be nice to people. Have a good weekend or good week. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I agree. And just uh, remember to check us out, folks, on all 2 real That's where you can find everything that we have. We are also on a bunch of the social media places. There's links to that on all 2 real as well. And be sure to share the show with your friends. Check out our tea Public. That's on there on all 2 real as well. Our Patreon. That's on there as well. Um, everything you want is at all 2 real com and until next time just remember that i love you sadie quinn probably loves you for listening to this episode and sesame loves you and until next time bye bye thanks for listening to all too real 2 podcast a cullen park production produced and edited by michael e cullen the second music by matthew haas subscribe and share the show visit us at cullenpark.com 